Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number three of this NHL 22 Quebec Nordiques relocation franchise mode where we've taken the Arizona Coyotes and moved them up north to Quebec. So in today's episode, we are going to be starting off the 2022-23 regular season. Obviously, we had to simulate through the first year to get the Coyotes relocated, and there have been some some minor difficulties here with the lineup so far, um, but something I want to talk to you guys about today is going to be in the edit players section, but we have other comments to get to before we actually address that situation. So let's get started here. So the first comment here came from Justin Goff saying, it would be cool to see you go after David Perron. He's from Quebec too. And I did go and look into it and Perron is currently on, I believe the New Jersey Devils. Um, the only issue with this is that unfortunately, uh, Perron is quite expensive um, as far as players go, as far as he's 5.75 million or 5.75, 7.15 million. Um, so yeah, fairly expensive two way forward. He would fit forward line two according to our scouting assessment, which actually wouldn't be too bad. Um, could probably use a guy who has all alone as a. Uh, yeah, that, that wouldn't be too bad, honestly, but um, I just don't know if it's doable money-wise at the moment. I know we've kind of maxed ourselves right up to the cap. Um, why is Shane Wright available? I don't get that, but um, you know, we could potentially look to trade. I don't think I'd want to trade Giroux. We'd probably be looking at a guy more like not necessarily Pavelski, but like maybe like Phil Kessel or somebody like that. Um, so that's an option. I don't know if we're actually going to pull this off or not right now. Um, I would like to kind of gear this team a little bit younger, apart from the, you know, older players we s just recently brought in. But we do have some other young guys here too, and like Thorson and Wright. And obviously, Gaucher, Jirasek, Gunther are all going to be making the team eventually as well. But... Um, I don't know if we make a move on that just yet. We might have to wait a year. Um, I don't know how long Perron's contract's on for either, which is the other um, kind of deciding factor here is that he is on for just one season. So we could reach out to him in free agency next year. I think that would be the best option at this point. Um, so yeah, that would be pretty good in my opinion. Um Okay, on to the next comment, and this one comes from uh, Joshua Coleman saying, I'd love it if you played games. Maybe people can educate me, but I don't get why I can never find NHL 22 franchise modes with YouTubers who actually play the games. And I think the reason is because the simulations just go faster, um, which, you know, is too bad. But I find it super fun to play games. This year, I'm noticing that the jersey numbers and names aren't appearing on the jerseys. No idea why, because um, when we go into edit players, they are there. Like, when you go to edit a player, you can see the jersey number and name and everything. Um, and you guys will notice something here right away that I think I'm going to touch on as we get through the comments. But, yeah, you can see, like, Chitrin's got all of his numbers and the captaincy and stuff. Like, even if the captaincy isn't correct, I think every player ends up with a C on it just for editing, which makes no sense. So that's another glitch in my opinion. Um, but let's just keep getting through comments here. And I think I, I want to see if you guys can pick it out or not in the uh, comments. What are you seeing that's different than the last video? But um, next comment came from Mr. Waternew saying, your team is going to be so stacked. I've never seen drafts as good as this. And yeah, I mean, we traded up big time last draft. It was crazy. Um, things went really well. And I'm just really happy with how the team's starting to look. Uh, Mark Laframbois commented, these should be the team leaders. Uh, Stahl should get the C, Chitrin, and then Keller or Kessel should get the A's. Um, so that's interesting. Um, Eric Stahl as the captain. I don't know if that's exactly the top candidate I was looking at. I mean, I think guys like Letang, Giroux, Pavelski, like these are all, I mean, Stahl's been an ex-captain. Same with Giroux, same with um, Pavelski. So there are definitely some born leaders on this team. Um, and then the other comment here 
from Duke Storm saying, I think you should give Chitrin the C, not this year, but the year after. So that's an interesting comment. I think that's one I agree on more. Um, and Tyranitar5 said, Wright might not be ready for it just yet, but give him a year or so and he'll definitely be captain material. Um, so another interesting comment there as far as Shane Wright could be our captain eventually. Um, yeah, I mean, not going to lie, he's such a stacked player on abilities that I would not be surprised if he grows up to like an 85 86 rating and we hand him the captaincy next year like that is something I could see us doing um so a couple different opinions there on captaincy uh Felix Cloutier said Antoine Roussel is actually from France I commented lol I noticed that once I looked at his stats and then Marc Laframbois had his two cents saying but he grew up near Quebec City and his family owns a maple syrup farm so that's very interesting fun fact there with Mark um so thank you for that one and yeah uh maybe we will go out after Anton Roussel after all and then the final comment here came from Mike Bierman saying Andre Bonk son of Radic Bonk lol and if you don't know Radic Bonk was an NHL player um I believe in the early 2000s but I might be wrong on that one um so yeah that's just a funny comment as well so I believe that's it for comments and now we get to the interesting part of this video as far as um, X-Factors and zone abilities go. And as you can see, Tape to Tape did not exist on Chitrin um, in the last episode. Reason being, you can go into Edit Player at this point. I don't understand why this is the case, but you can go into Edit Players and you can edit abilities. You can add, like let's say, okay, Chitrin's got Scene, I Send It, and Heat Seeker, and I added Tape to Tape. Let's say I want to add Back Atcha or um, Boring Leader or Bouncer. Or like I can add as many superstar abilities as I want to onto him. I don't understand why, but you can. Like, we could literally just go like this bump up Trusilence and shut down as well as all these other superstar abilities on Chitrin and save it. Like, I don't understand why. I feel like this is broken and that we shouldn't be taking advantage of it. But at the same time, I kind of want to hear your guys' comments and opinions on this situation because certain players like Clayton Keller or Jesse Pugliarvi or even Phil Kessel have no X-Factors or zone abilities. And I look at it and go, why? Like, why don't these guys have any kind of abilities? Like, in my opinion, I think I'm going to leave this because Clayton Keller should definitely have abilities, especially considering he's up to a 90 overall now. Um, but, like, if anything, Keller's going to have, like, I would say third eye maybe, but he's going to have, like, third eye as I would say third eye would be his uh, his own ability and then I would say he'd probably have like oh make it snappy too though is possible let's go third eye as his own ability but then like okay what's going on here that one there and then let's say I'd say make it snappy puck on a string um it's tricky, he's definitely good at that, and maybe like Elite Edges and Ankle Breaker. Like that's, that looks like a Clayton Keller build to me, honestly. Um, looks really good, in my opinion. And that's the thing, is that he's gonna get a slight boost now in chemistry just simply based on the fact that he has an X Factor and zone ability. So, not gonna lie, I think it's a little broken. But you can literally stack up players like this and there's nothing special like you're going to be better off when you're drafting to find guys that fit the chemistry model somewhat decently according to your coach and then go in if you're like okay this guy's a six foot five power forward who's a monster but he's got no zone abilities or superstar x factors big whoop all you got to do is go into editing add them onto the player and all of a sudden he's going to be a monster so like that's that's something you can do in this game i don't know if ent i entirely agree with it but it's there it's available it's doable and i wonder like if we go on to let's say um barrett hayton and i'm going oh, okay he's more of a two-way forward 
let's say, okay, he doesn't have a zone ability. He's not quite at that level to have a zone ability, but let's say he's really good at, you know, let's say he's good at one-timers on the power play or that he's good at face-offs or he's good at quick pick, right? All of a sudden, that's going to boost his power play ability now. Or yoink as well, stick lifting, right? Like, let's say he's a better defensive kind of two-way forward. Like, he's more defensively sound. That's something we can edit. And it's... I feel like it's broken. But let me know your opinions down in the comments below, guys. Because I want to hear what you have to say on this. Because I just don't know how to... How to react to this. How to understand it. And it feels like cheating. But is it if it's available to you? Like, is it really cheating? Or is it you just maximizing your team's potential? That's how I feel. Is that... Personally, I feel like it's wrong. I feel like... You know, players are given their zone abilities, X factors, and it should be set. But now if we go into edit lines, like, is there chemistry now? No, there isn't. I was very interested to see. Like, that's the thing, though, is if you do add this, like, yes, we just stack Clayton Keller, but now you can see he has no X factor chemistry line contributor when it probably should be make it snappy or 1T or something like that. But the only ones I'm noticing are Magnetic and Third Eye for 5-on-5 five five play. Like, even though Thorson, right here, Ricard Thorson, even though he has 1T, Magnetic is the trait that is contributing to the line in 5-on-5. In five five. So, versus you go onto the power play, and yes, yes, Thorson then has 1T. I wonder... Yeah, Clayton Keller doesn't have ability, though, but, oh. You see that all of a sudden that was up to a plus five. I believe last video that chemistry was at, like, a plus three. I'm going to double check it, but I believe it was at a plus three last video. So, yeah, guys, you can literally just boost your chemistry based on changing X factors around on players, which feels so wrong. Like, it does not feel like you should be able to do that. Like, I, I feel like it's... Like I said, I feel like it's cheating, but I don't think it is, honestly, which is crazy. So, yeah, um, anyways, to format the rest of this episode now, um, obviously we could turn this into just a player editing episode, um, but there were some comments as far as I want to, like, you guys want to see me play games. Don't know if that's going to be the overall consensus, but... I think we have to highlight certain games like home opener, season home opener would have to be one game that we highlight. Another one that we should probably highlight would be our Montreal Canadiens clash ups, clashes, sorry, not clash ups, um, which takes us right past January all the way to March. Okay, so maybe not this episode, maybe we'll be looking at like Ottawa and... I want to say Boston or maybe Toronto would be good teams to take on too as far as like just Canadian teams, right? Like we want to highlight those. But apart from that, I think that's how we're going to format the episodes. We're going to do them a bit slower. We're going to get your guys' feedback. We're going to make trades. We're going to make moves throughout the season because that is, you know, slower simming. I'm not going to be going like, all right, let's go half season. Like that's not going to be happening this series, which I hope you guys are excited for because... Honestly, I think it's going to make a big difference with how things go in this series. But, all right, Shane Wright was injured. I hit best lines because the game's laggy. Okay. Okay, so we're going to get into the season home opener here. We're going to start with a slow sim. You guys will get to see a little bit of play. But at the same time, I just don't get why the jerseys aren't working. So anyways, let's get into this. So, first period of the game. It's 13 to 7 on shots. The Nordiques just simply out shooting the Senators, but at the same time, not doing all that well based on, you know, how the game's going. It's 0 0. Um, nothing too crazy really going on for Quebec up to this point. You know, Keller's winning faceoffs, guys are getting shots, but that's, that's it. So. Second period simulation, it's a 1-1 game. Thomas Shabbat opens the scoring, and then Phil Kessel ties it up. 29-12 to 12 in shots. So at this point, we are going to probably be playing on 
I want to say superstar if you can you can't really see the team ratings right behind my head um so there they are uh 91 93 85 so an absolutely stacked quebec team here that we're starting off with versus they got tomash hurdle interesting but just some star players no real x-factor players on ottawa here and we are playing on superstar so i very well might lose this game but let's see if the jersey numbers are in there let's see what happens um five minute period should be an entertaining one for you guys all right, so here we go. Should be an interesting third period. And yeah, as you can see, no jersey numbers. Um, also, guys, let me know what you think. Oh, ho, ho, Shane Wright gets laid out. Welcome to the NHL from Brady Kachuk. That one's got to sting a bit. All right, good sticks there, though, boys. All right, here we go. Shane Wright coming down the wall. Gets bumped a little bit. Why are we playing so passive? So yeah, you can see the X-Factors um, very much activated on that play for Latang going backwards. Now here we go, Eric Stahl coming down the side. He's going to send this thing in deep. Sammy Blade just missed it. Delzato going to get bumped off again. Eric Stahl right out in front. Great chance for Barrett Hayden, and somehow he cannot give the Nordiques the lead here. Oh my goodness. Good chances, though. So... I mean, yeah, so far I'm liking the gameplay. I think it looks really good. I don't know why my lines are way over. Like, it looks a little bit off on that side. Oh, here we go. Sammy Blade turnover. Barrett Hayton. Can't find it. What is going on? Although I would not mind Phil Kessel burying one right away here. That would be real nice. Another faceoff going to go back to Chitrin. He's looking to send this back to Riley, who's going to fire through traffic. That one didn't get through, though. Oh, there's a pickoff. Kessel. Oh, great opportunity with one second left. So there you have it. We're going to overtime, but man, there was some chances. Shane Wright gets laid out on that one play. All right. Overtime coming up next. 34 to 23 in shots. We had our chances, and somehow we've only scored once. So yeah, Matt Murray's looking real nice right about now. So... Here we go, OT, inbound, inbound, there's no M in inbound, anyways, Jeru Pavelski out first, so that's an interesting forward line, Truba coming down the wall, he's going to give it up and close Jeru's in on a breakaway, oh, Jeru gets absolutely robbed too, okay, Claude Jeru just going to, what is going on here, okay, Pavelski grabs it, Tomash Hurdle coming down the wing. Gets right by his guy. And that's going to be a power play for us. Goaltender interference on Brady Kachuk. They call it this year. I forgot about that. Oh my goodness. I was like, it's a goal. It's a goal. And no, it's not a goal. It's a power play. <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. I love the call, though. So I think we've gotten one power play all game. I might be wrong, but... Also, it doesn't help that Shane writes the guy out taking the face off, but he wins it. Chitrin looking around. Sees Shane Wright right down the middle. He just didn't quite get it. Now Shane Wright over and around. Chitrin over to right. Good chance for Shane Wright there. Oh. Okay, I like who we've got out on the ice right now. And we've got lots of time, too. Jacob Chitrin looking for a first assist of the season. Who's got one T there? Is that Thorson, I believe? Yeah, it is Thorson out here with Chitrin. Interesting. Okay. Thorson up to Keller, over to right. Good hold, Shane Wright. Oh, he beats his guy too. Shane Wright through traffic, can't get it to go. Oh, too bad. Not gonna lie, power plays are really hard this year. Maybe that's just me, but I have really struggled with converting on them so Chitrin over to Thorson oh there was room there too oh good stick Thorson I like it anyways Keller walking in gonna get bumped off the puck like it's nothing I love it Thomas Shabbat can't make the play Okay, 
catch him out of position. Let's go. Here we go. Clayton Keller down the wing. Looking out in front. Find Shane Wright again. Oh my goodness, man. How have we not converted on those? Oh, it's four on three. <laughs> Come on, man. We got to finish this thing off. Pavelski and Giroux go back out with Latang and maybe I don't know who else is on there. Pavelski gonna win it, and it's gonna be Morgan Riley. So Morgan Riley through traffic, rebound. Pavelski, great chance. Oh my goodness, how on earth did they keep that out? All right, Giroux goes for the long pass. Bernard Docker picks it off. Okay, can we play? Can we play some hockey, guys? Seriously, like the Ottawa guys are absolutely trolling us right now. Okay, here we go. There's a good pass to Latang. Chris Latang walks in and shoots. Good save, Matt Murray. Dude, call a freaking penalty on that. Bernard Docker walks all the way out and then like gets away with a sly poke check. I don't think so, man. Stutzla out front. Oh my goodness, what's going on? Okay. Down to the last 40 seconds. Giroux, drive, man. Chitrin tried it. <sighs> we got so many chances in that OT and somehow couldn't bury it. Brady could chuck. Like, that's... <sighs> that was a crazy overtime as well. Great chances at both ends. And, well, we head straight into the shootout by the looks of it. So, here we go. Tomas Hurdle up first. Tries it on Vanisak, but a good save there by Vidic. So, not a bad start. And Claude Giroux going to be the first, first guy to walk in. Oh, and Giroux lights the lamp. What a goal. Beautiful. Yeah, Giroux just absolutely undresses Matt Murray. We finally find the back of the net in this game. And uh, we go up. One to nothing on the shootout checklist. So Tim Stutzla now walks in. Oh, <laughs> that was insane. That was such a nice goal. Stutzla pulls a perfect Forsberg on Vanisak, and now the pressure is on us to score. And the game is sinking. No idea what just happened there. I love... I love how laggy this game, and we missed our shot. Great. Great. That's just fantastic. Oh, my goodness. So, Brandstrom gets to, yeah. Talk about a fantastic game, man. I love how we're going to lose this game, most likely. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, at least we actually get to shoot this time. So, Phil Kessel. At least we actually scored. Um, then again, shootouts seem to be way easier this year as well. Like, it's literally just fakes, and you get the goalies going all over the place. So, Brady Kachuk up now, and he is stopped. Beautiful save by Vanisak. And who's up next? Uh, Joe Pavelski. All right. Oh, I pulled it when I wanted to pull it back to the backhand. Like, I had Murray going, so. Thomas Shabbat is up next. Ottawa's captain. Shabbat walks in. Oh. That one stings. It really does because Shabbat pretty much did not like that. That should be a save by Vanisak all game. But anyways, Morgan Riley up next. Oh, and we lose it in a shootout. Oh, that one stings. Oh talk about a nasty nasty way to end that and i mean we probably would have won if clayton keller had got to shoot properly so don't ask me what happened there with the game um i'm not impressed with it but you know that's nhl 22 for you guys in franchise mode so far oh, nasty nasty loss there for the nordiques 41 to 24 honestly we 100 percent deserve to win that game and uh just couldn't convert on the power play either, so that's no good off the start of the season. 
So we fail to win our regular season home opener. Not a great start to the year by any means, but now we get to simulate ahead a bit here and see how things go. So we're going to simulate up to the Toronto game, um, and we're going to see how things go here. So starting it off against the Tampa Bay Lightning, a 4-2 loss on the road. Not a great start for the Nordiques at all. All right, and then we lose again to Tampa at home. Heading over to Philly, and we do get a 4-1 to one win, so that's not so bad. But I think we have two franchise players in here as well. Like, looking at the draft classes here, I know Bedard's a franchise, but Coulton might be as well, which is interesting. Um, Brewer is a defensive defenseman. Okay, but he could fit what we're looking to play. Okay, not bad. So, moving forward more, Tucson players are getting injured like crazy, um, but we're 1-2-1 one, one to start off, not in a good spot. Up against Seattle now, 4 nothing loss, ouch, big time ouch, but then we do get a 4-3 to three shootout win there against Washington. Soderstrom goes out with a fractured jaw, ouch, um, and Kessel wants to speak about ice time concerns, can we... Okay, um, okay, sweet. Kessel's a team player. That's what we want to see. So, okay, we lose 5-3 to three against uh, Columbus there as well. The Nordiques not off to a hot start considering how good this team should be. Pugliarvi complaining about minutes too. Um, I guess he'll promise him that he's going to get more, but he's playing second line, so I don't know why he's complaining. It is what it is, I guess, but man, this is kind of not great. So, up against Detroit, 4 nothing win. Not bad. Um, let's see how these last two games against Florida and LA go because that is going to determine how good we're looking. Okay, 3 nothing win against Florida. Not bad. And then against LA, 4 nothing win. Okay, the Nordiques kind of start pushing here. Uh, they're not like the Leafs by any means who are 6-2-0 and to start the season, but and we're not doing terrible. 5-4-1. Five, five, and one. Um Toronto, obviously, a couple points ahead of us right now. Actually, just one point ahead of us. Um, and the Senators are in first. Don't ask me how, but they are. Um, they're leading almost the entire league. They're second place in the league. Like, what? Like, seriously? Ottawa's second place? Chris Letang leading the team, though. Not bad. Eight points in ten games. Um, it's not crazy for, it's crazy for a defenseman, but nothing crazy overall. Shane Wright's got six points. Okay. Okay. I'd like to see a little bit more from him potentially, but then again, you look at a guy like, um, Thorson, one goal through 10 contests. He's got a good enough shot to be goalies. Only problem is we haven't really been able to utilize him on the power play yet, so... Let's uh, let's get into this Toronto game. I think it's going to be a good one. And then right after that, I think we're going to want to play Boston too because we're going to be, in obviously being in the Atlantic, we're going to have a lot of the same rivals. Um, teams like the Canadiens, the Lightning. I mean, Lightning we didn't really highlight. So maybe we just highlight Toronto in this episode as well. Um, but let's see. So I would love to get a win against Toronto. This would be huge if we can. Um... And yeah, obviously, you know, border rivals. First period, 0-0, Nordiques out shooting the Leafs 11-7 in the first. Second period, it's a 1-1 game as John Tavares and Jesse Pugliarvi get on the board. 21-14 for the Nordiques in shots. And well, let's see how well the uh, Nordiques can play here, if they can contain the absolutely skilled players of Matthews, Marner, and Tavares, or what's going to happen. All right, so here we go at the Videotron Center. You guys are going to have to put up with the no uh, no numbers on the jerseys for now, but Shane Wright going to start off with a face-off win here, and we are into it. So uh, Nylander going to get in on the back check there. That's not what we want to see, but Matthews comes down the wing, and Morgan Riley's going to close him out. Beautiful. Good sticks, boys. I like it. All right, Eric Stahl now picking up the puck. He's going to walk in, shoot, and that thing's going over top, and it's in. Eric Stahl somehow finds the net on that. Three goals this season, so not bad. Um, but a bit of a lucky bounce there, and Eric Stahl going to get the goal. Strange one, to be honest, but uh, who cares? When that one's going in, that one's going in, and a bouncer 
that just oh ooh, that's got a sting for toronto but um that's what we gotta do that's what we gotta be able to pull off and uh not bad so far so face off gonna go to nolan patrick and we are going to go right up the middle here nolan patrick walks in shoots good save Okay, Pavelski looking to go up the middle, finds Shane Wright cutting down the wall, Shane Wright driving to the net, great chance, oh my goodness, we had opportunity there. Sandine going to lose this on the forecheck, and somehow we lose him. Here we go, Shane Wright picks off the play, huge play to Keller, right to Keller, what a goal. That's just a great effort on the forecheck and along the boards. And we make it a 3-1 game to pretty much seal this deal off. So, hey, when Shane Wright's making turnover plays like that, oh, that's gorgeous. So, yeah, that was real nice. Clayton Keller, fifth goal this season. That's got to be some kind of big point based on what he's uh, celebrating like there. So, that's fancy. And tape to tape going to be showing off there for X Factors just right there. Beautiful play. Clayton Keller finds it, and hopefully we can get some jersey numbers soon, but that pretty much wraps it up for this game. This is looking real good, but don't count Toronto out just yet. Face-off now, going to go back to Pugliarvi. Pugliarvi comes walking in, going to drop pass over to Latang. He's going to fire off Austin Matthews' ankle. Pugliarvi now driving down and around. Good chance. Rebound scores again. Oh my goodness. Claude Giroux there to bury the rebound. And if this is Superstar for Toronto, oh boy. Uh, that's got to sting. That's got to sting big time. But uh, Claude Giroux there to tap in the rebound. Gorgeous play. And Morasic lets in another one. Oh boy. So it goes from a 1-1 game to a 4-1 game in the span of about two minutes. So that, uh, that's really really nice. Lawson Kroos now misses Phil Kessel. Oh, we got a foot race here. Mitch Marner walking in, tries to get around Latang, couldn't do it. Oh, okay, Marner, yeah, good chance there. Matthew's going to get pinned off. But we're down to the last few seconds. What a shot there. Better save. And a good play by Lawson Kroos to finish this one off. It was over there for the last minute, but um, Quebec scores three late goals to finish off the Toronto Maple Leafs. You know, a thrilling game overall, especially in the third period. But uh, yeah, not a bad start there. Um, in the first month and a bit, looking all right. There, as you can see, we got... Um, what, what's our mascot's name again? It's like Bombadoo. I can't remember his name, but Clayton Keller, great goal. And yeah, you just gotta like how uh, how this game turned out in the end for Quebec. So yeah, it's been fantastic so far. We outshoot them big time. Don't really out attack them by any means, but uh, fairly balanced game overall too. I'm quite quite impressed with that. Pull your every two points on the night. And that three, di three goal difference is all a result of the third period. So the Nordiques move up to third place in the Atlantic. And with 13 points, they're not sitting too bad by any means. So I think we're just going to finish off this episode with a little bit more simulating through, I want to say, the rest of November. Because I'm not seeing any really huge games in here that we need to take care of. So... We're going to simulate up to December 1st, and that will conclude this episode. So Clayton Keller supposedly had an injury. Um, Soderstrom going to be healed there. Actually, that's good. Soderstrom not being out is definitely going to help this team a little bit. So yeah, let's get him in. I can't believe Lawson Kroos was playing without negative chemistry. That just doesn't quite add up, but okay. <laughs> um, all right. I guess if you have true silence, I guess he doesn't have true silence though. But anyways, our Boston game, we lose 4-1. to one. Uh, We get an offer for Riley Smith. We're not making that deal. Um, game against San Jose, 2-0 win. Colton Jenkins is happy with the promise. Um, we're definitely keeping Shane right up in the NHL for a year. Uh, excellent, I agree with your call. Let's go with your decision. Awesome. 
Yeah, Shane Wright should be staying. Game against Pittsburgh. And we win that 3-2 in overtime. Then against Edmonton. Edmonton's a tough team. We lose 4-1. And then the Buffalo game, we win 5-1. Okay, so... I mean, the Nordiques are right up there with the Senators and a few other teams here. We lose Morgan Riley to a pulled groin. Ouch. Um, and then Jesse Pugliarvi. How do we break our promise? Um, is he going to be a team player? We need him more out there, according to him. Okay, so interesting, but we're winning right now. So 5-4 overtime win there. Shootout win, sorry, against St. Louis. Then we lose 3-2 to two in a shootout against, ooh, against the Flyers, but Morgan Riley is back, and we lose another game against Washington too. So a um, bit of an interesting start here. Looks like... Shane Wright's up to a 79. Same with Ricard Thorson. Um, I, so I like how these guys are playing. I don't like that Thorson's only got eight points in the first 20 here, but you know they can't always be perfect starts to the season. Riley's got eight points. Chitron's only's got six. Ouch. Um, but the Tang's got 15. Holy. Chris the Tang's going off. 15 points for Keller. Um, 12 points for. Shane Wright, not bad. 15 for Pavelski as well. 6, 11, 8, okay, not bad. Not bad at all. 8 points for Barrett Hayton, he's crushing it. 7 for Gelchenyuk and Stahl. 6 for Patrick, 8 for Thorson. Like, yeah, I'm uh, pretty happy with this so far, how the team's performing. The goalies have been quite steady overall. Nothing that's really stood out as disappointing. 7-2 is a big loss, but then we recap and win the or regroup and win against the Rangers 4-3. San Jose beats us 6-3, though. That's an ouch. Um, Seattle is up next. Kessel seems to be the most self-conscious player on our team at the moment. Oh, man, Phil, that's that's no good, man. you got to be a little more confident in yourself there. Ouch. Are you are you kidding me? Pull your RV. Yeah, you better be a team player at this point because we're going to trade you if you keep complaining to us. So Seattle's up next. They're 10 and 10, and we lose 2 0. Holy Jesse Pugliarvi, you are genuinely getting annoying at this point. Um, you need a vote of confidence from your coach every game? Like, what's going on here, buddy? Put some pucks in the net, buddy. So um, I'm going to turn off player conversations at this point. We have to deal with so many of them. We can't even get a float of the season going, so I think I'm going to shut off player conversations. Um, okay, next up is Calgary. We win that one 6-1, to one. and to recap or cap off the episode, we've got the Dallas Stars, and we lose 2-1 to one in overtime. So currently sitting at 24 games played, the Nordiques start off with just 27 points. Clayton Keller leading the team with 18 through 24. Not very good, honestly. Um, those last couple, the last week and a bit did not go according to plan from where we were at. We were sitting third in the Atlantic and then fell down to fifth as teams like Florida and Boston shot their way up, and we lost a lot. That's the problem, was that we lost three out of five, um, five out of seven. So, yeah, that's that's got to be better. As uh, the Nordiques currently sit with a 12, 9, and 3 record. So anyways, I think that's where we're going to be wrapping it up. We're going to be taking it a little bit slower um, throughout this series. You know, we'll get through a bit more of, uh, of the season as the next episode comes around. And I don't have to do as, as, much, as, it, as much explaining. Sorry, I'm getting my words all mixed up. But, you know, progress reports. Team's not doing terrible. I think we... Uh, we could be doing a bit better, but at the same time, we have some young players in here that are just starting to hit their developmental curves, and um, we'll hopefully see a lot of growth here over the next few seasons. Um, and, you know, if statistical growth plays any factor, that would be huge. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish EA would add training to this game, but it just doesn't seem to be happening. So that's where we're going to be wrapping it up for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to go down below, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and hit the notification bell to never miss these uploads. But that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed, and until next time.